Hi, this is Simon with ToughTrader.com doing the trade review for preview, actually, believe it or not, for um, January 9th. And uh, we're doing it so that we can save some time in the morning and ready to go. So we're basically the picture's not going to change on the day time frame between now and uh, and today's close unless we just absolutely flush. But even then, the majority of the volume has been put in, so we have a pretty good picture. So let's just go step by step of what we need to see in terms of making a uh, decision-making process. So um, how do I want to run this? Okay, we have a couple of checkpoints that we have for gauging our bearishness, how bearish we are, how bullish. Um, and before I get started, um, past performance is not indicative of future results. This is for educational purposes only. I'm sharing my trade plan with you. I hope this will make you a better trader. And please have a risk management plan in place. You can lose a lot of money trading futures. It is not as easy as it looks, okay? And it can be a very frustrating career and a very frustrating process. There's no re reason to blow up. If you follow a process with an edge, you should be able to make money. You may not become a millionaire, but you should be able to make money uh, if you follow a process and you allow that process to pay you. Okay, let's go through this step by step. First of all, pulling up the other charts. Is. Let's go to the profile. And let's go to the PPOs. And we'll do this one market by one market. There we go. And let's start off with ES, easiest one, all right? So, number one for ES. In order for me, First of all, my, the neighborhood value looks like it's gonna be set between 27.45 and we have a, I don't know, so it's a great low, but it, it's not a poor low, but it's not a fantastic low either. We have 27.45, right, to 27.36.75. That may shift a little bit by the close, but that's your value area, right? So the first thing on my checklist that I'm gonna write down on ES, I've gotta be below 27.36 and three quarters to have a down day, right, number one. Number two thing is the average rotation size. I want to put this in my notes. The biggest rotation came at the open, and I believe that rotation was, someone correct me, but I think we had the biggest upside and downside rotation was from, let's see here real quick, ES. It looks like the best we were able to manage was from 2744 down to 27.37. So seven points of rotation, high to low. And actually from the open, I stand back, that's closer to, here I can tell you right now, 27.41 down to 27.37. Four points of rotation was about the biggest rotation down that I saw this morning. Why is that important? If tomorrow morning I walk in and I see the rotation size at eight points in the first five minutes, that'll be my first clue that something has changed. Participants have changed attitudes or the way in which they want to attack the market, and I'm going to be heads up for a change in character. Until I have that, I'm not going to be worried about it, right? Going back to the TPO, next thing I'm going to note, my volume point of control and my TPO point of control are both sitting at approximately 2740 to 274150. A first test into that area, right? I would expect to see responsive buyers. If I blast, so then what I want in my notes is I want to say, is if I blast through that area, right? I wanna be really clear. If I blast through that location, I want a heads up because if I blast this, I may blast this area, right? I may blast this area. The next thing I want in my notes is the points of control below have almost been tested, right? Not, it didn't miss by very much, right? And that generally speaking, weakens their ability to hold, right? You gotta remember what we're doing is this it's the easiest way to picture that is, uh, and obviously we're getting responsive buyers for a push back up right here on ES and NQ, right? So picture we have this funnel, right? And everyone keeps jumping into this funnel and it's getting narrower and narrower at the top. Why is it getting narrower? Well, all markets work on, on this same perception that, and that perception is this. As markets go up, generally the way it works is you pull back, you find responsive buyers, and you push up, you pull back, you find responsive buyers, you push up, 
you pull back that's why the pattern looks so familiar right everyone knows that pattern when the pattern goes like this and this portion of the pattern right never plays out you don't ever come back and build the strength that you need to you're not it, just imagine a building where you're just pushing it higher and higher and you're not reinforcing any of the floors that's what happens when you get this which is why I'm concerned about these areas down here so let me address what I'm doing in my own trading account uh, to not get clipped in one of those uh, November 29th uh, moves that we had like in NASDAQ where it just rolls down the first period is I am skipping the first half hour to 45 minutes of the day outside of scalps and I'm certainly not even if I do scalp I will not be calling it in the room that is how I am playing defense in my own trading account okay is I am letting that first half hour go and that keeps me from if you go back and look on NQ on November 29th you will see that we just did one of these jobs where we just drove straight down and blew up every support area below whether it was on news or not doesn't matter that this is my in this environment this is my biggest fear and why is that my biggest fear because I could have easily suffered here I'll go show it to you there it is on this day right here this is on ES, but NQ uh, had a similar move. I could easily suffer my max stops for the day, although this would have been outside the first half hour period. But that being said, the point of control obviously held, and my concern was blasting through that point of control. We'll look on NQ in a minute. But my concern is taking my full two stops, and I don't ever get back into the game. So what helps me here, again, guys in the room, getting above the last bestseller for a push back up will keep you from taking any further, you know, taking devastating losses right and that's why I've shifted my strategy from buying straight into support to letting them prove to me they can get above the last best buyer and then wait for the backside test I'm willing to miss this trade in exchange so I've made it a trade-off I'm willing to miss that to in exchange for hopefully avoiding this stop I'm willing to miss this pop if you're not willing to trade those two things off you're gonna always be in a conundrum about how you want to handle your entry exit stop position right that's just all there is to it okay so going back to keeping this as brief as possible and now that we've had all our pretty designs I know that I've got to get below here 2737 on ES to have any downside if I do not get below 2737 there's no downside I might as well look at every single trade as a scalping opportunity and that is that right and as you can see right now even then how quickly people are to step back into the market for whatever reason the market perceives value current market as undervalued and we have simply not pushed high enough to find sellers that's all there is to it when we find sellers we will find rotations down and until that point the market will keep looking for value okay number two from that 2747 let's assume we close at 2747 30 down which would put me at 2717 that's about as far as I expect to extend to the downside on most normal days these are the areas um, this is the area I'm most concerned with right from the close down to 2717 I'm not worried much about what's behind there because we're unlikely to get to it so I can narrow my field of focus this point of control and this point of control these two areas in here should on paper right that structure right there 2734 to 2731 and this general area here from where the gap from where the market closed 2723 to 2020, 2726 these two areas should be my strongest areas of potential counter rotation right where I should be able to get back up if I get to an extreme on if I get to an extreme on ES this becomes my these single prints down here and these single prints right down here so this 2728 and a quarter to 2726 there are single prints in there, so they become a candidate for reversal. See this huge area of single prints? I think this makes a better candidate for reversal again. That's almost exactly at my 30 point stretch to the downside. This is the top of an open window. Um, underneath that, I would write very importantly there's Dalton's gap fill at 27.1450. And again, the TPO and the volume point of control. Everything from 20, the half gap here, which is 27.15 
all of this from 27.15 and three quarters to 27.10. This is very, very, if we get somehow lucky enough to get into this, this is all very high value uh, swing area push out. Again, I think it's going to be impossible to get down there unless something dramatic changes. But we saw again on the 29th, markets can change pretty quickly, right? So I have that on there. These are my are going to be my other, this is going to be my, each of my key areas. And as we dig further into this, right, the further we dig in, right, and if range expands significantly. So here's the trick. If range expands significantly, what I want to see is the stop one timing on the 15 minute and the 30 minute time frame to know I'm in the clear and then I'm searching for a 50 60 retrace on ES. I want everyone to make sure I'm, I'm that they're clear on this. Let's say these are 30 minute bars, right? And we start pushing down and we're one timing, right? And we finally stop one timing. Remember that does not mean that does not mean that we close above the prior bar. It simply means we trade above the fire prior bar. From the point that we tr that bar closes, okay? and then we can get above our last best seller, I will then start working logically ways to find 50, 60 retraces off to the, on the hard edge, hard edge to the right with a stop below the swing low with the intention of swinging to the upside if we get the push down again. Right now this is all fantasy trading because there's not a seller in the house, right? So uh, at any rate, this is what I plan for from that perspective. Um, I'm not gonna cover this because I published, I'm gonna publish this to the public, but again, if I'm above the 24-hour VWAP, um, I'm going to add this tonight, and I'll cover it um, in the. I'll cover it when I'm done with this, guys. I'll take a step back when I'm done with this. But if I'm above the 24-hour VWAP and I can get above my last best seller, I will push my longs longer from there. It's really hard for me to push longs five or six days into a rally, but that's the other way to handle a straight-up market, right? If that was CL, the funny thing. So I'm going to talk about the funny thing about this is if this was CL. I would see this as a normal chart. Um, it's funny, I wrote that in my journal over lunch, that if this were CL, I would think this is a perfectly normal way for a market to operate. Because it's ES and NQ, I don't think it's normal way for it to operate. And so uh, I've been I've been having a hard time finding longs in this market, and that's probably a hole in my, in my thought process that I need to fix, right? Um, let's see what else we have here that makes sense. Um, Oh, let's go do NQ really quick. Okay, for NASDAQ, again, I've already voiced my concern earlier that all these points of control have either been tested or almost tested all the way through here from here, excuse me, here all the way. We haven't quite tested them, but we almost tested them. If we, if this sets up a condition where we can shoot through on the downside and that makes us vulnerable to shooting through the 66-65-54. You say, well, wow, that sounds impossible. You know, that these are still, these TPO points of control and this volume point of control, these are still naked. I'm telling you, when the value area almost gets tested and they just miss, we get that funnel effect where everyone tries to hit the exit at the same time. These become susceptible to breaking. I would say my first clean area is that 6,500 down there, which is obviously, it's 186 points away. I don't expect that to get tested tomorrow. Logically from 6,686, I would subtract 100 points to figure out my field of play. That puts me at uh, 6,586, which is right here. And that puts me right into those TPO points of control and those volume points of control. I'm just telling you when I've, I've seen a lot of structure that looks like this in my career. And so what I would expect is I would expect them to make it it's going to get really shaky in here. I still think this holds, but expect them to make it really, really challenging. And I would look. So what I would look for in NQ is maybe to let them put in the response of buy if we get down 100. Let them stop one timing on the half hour time frame, which we'll almost certainly be doing on the um, on the 30 minute chart. Let them get above that stop one timing get above and look for a 50 60 back with a stop at the swing low for the bigger swing up. I would rather do that than take some vicious stops as it's rolling down. That's the best way I, I can uh, that's the best way I have to describe that. If that makes any sense. So, um, and again, I think when we look at, when we scrunch this up into a bigger picture, right? 
the most simple of technical analysis that you can possibly do. There's the old swing high. And by the way, if you don't think we pull back, right, after the market rips for days in a row, you're, you're mistaken. If you'll look, we got into a similar market here. And so I'll give you the days that were ugly so you can go look at them and figure out how you'd want to handle those days. If you found yourself caught in those days, how you'd want to handle those particular trades. I would look at what happened on November 1st. I would look what happened here on, it looks like November 8th, right? I would look at what happened right here. That has to be the 29th, right in there. What, what happened after we were driving up day after day and there's just all these buyers sitting in here? What happened in this, in this scenario, right? And then if you also look, like the natural thing to say, if, if you'll notice is, well, here's the backside test of the last break, right? But if we go do a quick study of that, just recently how the market's been handling that. So look how once the market gets extended away from that break, so there's the last swing high. See how we pushed underneath? I'm talking about this right here, right? So everyone who was waiting at, at the last test of the backside test of the old high for continuation, everyone got stopped. Here's the old swing high right here. So it shifts, right? We shift up. And you think, oh, certainly we get a backside test of that. And that'll be a good place. I'm talking about right here. And they smoke them, right? That hasn't been a very good place to to establish a long position is the backside test. Again, if you'll notice, we had one more step up, right? And you're starting to think, oh, look, certainly the backside test over here will be a good place. And they smoke it yet again, right? Oh, excuse me, over here, I'm off to the right. And they smoke them yet again. You can see this time they actually held it for a bounce, but ultimately they smoked underneath. So market communicates in pretty interesting ways. And right now what the market's telling us is when we come back, Right? If you're targeting this as your area for a response to buy, that 65.43, notice that's a pretty much 140 points from where we are right now. And what the market has said, going back to November, uh, going back to November, the last time that setup worked where you got a backside test of a critical breakout point, right? If you were, and again, I'm just talking to leverage traders because obviously if you established a position at each of the swing points, you ended up making money. But if you're a leverage trader, 1024 is the last time that trade worked, right? And so you could have had someone going, hey, look, the backside test of the break, and I imagine that's what this was right over here as well, right? Or this right here, and then this again. If you're a trader who looks for pinpoint accuracy, what this tells me is this tr these traders are getting blown up when they're trying to put in a position. What do I mean by that? Yeah, if you're a long side trader, and you load in at 66.47 for a swing up and you can't afford to take heat behind you, this thing drove you all the way back to 63.78 before paying you. Most day traders, right, and a lot of swing traders cannot survive that heat back to survive for this push back up, right? So um, this time we did bounce on this one, but on all these other occasions, we clearly got swept through those levels. And I would eye the backside test of those areas as a, that's a visual location. It would be considered a weak location by Dalton. And I would look to see that tra what I would really use to look, lo looking at these patterns, is what I would rather see is us trade underneath these key breakout areas. And I bet if you go back in, what you find is a pattern that looks like this. So let's say this is the breakout, right? So we break, we break out, come back in little tiny head fake right people screw around with it they catch a little scalp smoked right but what I would be looking for is now the push back above and then the backside test for the continuation higher I bet if you go back and look at all those patterns there this is the pattern you find and I bet all the money is sitting right here that's the easiest trade um, that's the easiest trade and what I'd want to go back through there and look was on this trade, did this push us back above the 24-hour VWAP in here? Did we get above, are we above the point of control from a multi-day point of control, which I bet we are, right? What you end up doing is trapping these traders underneath here, right? And then you finally get the fuel to launch to the upside. To me, interesting. To me, that's the better, that's the better trade, right? And then finally, let's go look at the Russell. 
for today. Does anyone have any questions over NQ? Does that make sense? My concerns, the first, I can tell you right now, my concern is remains inside the first hour of, I don't think the market will fall apart. I just think that we'll, that we're susceptible to this. Oh, here. I promise you there's someone in trading land right now. So it's pretty rare for my white zones to get blown up, right? Um, so this is a great example. See how we had an increase in rotation size? The market just fell apart off the open. So the Russell's the thinnest product of all three products that I really monitor in the room, right? So you'll notice after the first hour, right? Look how stable the mark, the trading in Russell got. Really stable, right? But even with that, the white zone for the first time in here, I bet if you take a one minute chart, actually I can tell you for a fact, if you trade in the first five minutes, we overshot this level. I, I'd actually have to go and see a, a smaller time frame, but you can see that we responded from this white zone. We responded from this white zone. This one got all blown up. I'll have to go see why that got wrecked so horribly but if you look I've got a feeling one of my first gauges for when I build a zone as to whether I got it right or wrong one of the first things I do is I go and I look and see what the backside test looks like and you can see here we came to the tick to this white zone right here and what does that tell me that tells me that there were players or traders that that initiated positions in here and immediately wanted a refund on the backside test there so if you look zone one zone two this zone got blown up. Here was your refund trade. And then the market treated the zones. It really respected the zones on the way back up the balance of the day, right? Um, this already got tested. And in here, even within here, you got to remember, I'm pretty quick on the scales. I'm not claiming this zone worked on the backside test. But what I am saying is that the zones overall, when I go back and I see these get blown up, they did work. So let's go back to what my let's go back to what my concerns are in the morning if you need a picture of what my concern is this is the picture of my concern where it's the biggest single five minute bar in any day and what you should go back and do is even if you trade at es or even if you trade nq is to figure out how you would handle this bar right and this makes a great psychological practice right because let's say you went okay i went long here let's say you were looking long which wouldn't have been crazy right you push long at 50, uh, at 1557. You got your rotation to 1558.50. So according to the rules that I trade the Russell by, right, one point scale, bring stop to break even, and hope that it presses through. As it was, it just tagged to 1558.50. You never got your second scale, and you should have gotten stopped. If you initiated a second time, this should have been a relatively tight stop, right? And then the yellow zone is the yellow zone. It's simply lower odds, and you can see it got traded through. It was a support resistance area. You can see that it tested from both sides. It just wasn't as strong as the white zone, right? How would you handle, if this was an ES trading bar, and this was 15 points, right? How would you handle this, right? How is this going to change your, your psychology of your trading is really, really important question to ask. And then going back to Mike, I don't know if Mike's in the room right now. Mike asked... And so we'll cover it. He's not in the room right now. But if you look, here's the rotation, uh, here's the rotation down. Here's my best last seller, right, guys? This bar. So no one's going to consider taking a stop against that bar, right? Here's my next best last seller right here. And notice, when we get above and we close above that is right here, we never get a, a test back in. Why, why am I pointing this out if that's what occurred, right? I'm pointing that out because you have to be psychologically ready. Look how that day played out, and it never gave you an in, a second in over here. Pull this in. It never gave you the second test, and I find a lot of traders who start trading poorly get really angry when they recognize that, hey, there's my in, and it never gives you the backside. But if you'll look, if you continue through this day wanting to continue the methodology on Russell instead of an ES and NQ, Let's assume either this or this was my best last seller, right? One of these two bars right in here, right? You had to get above this guy, but we already knew that, right? So we come back up, we close above the best last seller, we test into him right here. If you're considering this bar your best last seller, again, I'm not gonna pull up because I'm sharing this with the whole world, so I'm not gonna say which one had the better seller in it, but they both ended up getting backside tested for continuation higher, 
right? So there were alternate means to get in, uh, but the methodology worked. I would be very focused, right? Everyone gets focused on, wow, how could have I made more money in these environments? I would be more focused on protecting my downside. If you get a nasty open like this, what scenario you're going to use to protect your capital if we get a rip like that or on any of those other dates. And this is the reason why, because most of these rip downs are going to be one time wonders, right? And you're going to end up, if you look at the market from a larger structure, we're going to end up having continuation, right? This really should be a very good year trading wise. And this is what happens to traders. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but not to such a degree. I don't think that Friday morning open was nearly as brutal. And that was big down, but not like, that wasn't like that. Hey, you're very welcome, Dan. I appreciate it. Dan was saying this was the best part of my site, the hip pocket lesson. So, uh, so uh, my point behind this on these big rip downs is if you'll go back and look at this or um, this rip down here, right? Or if you'll look at, and this should be, able, you should be able to answer this as a trader, right? We go back and look at NQ right there on any of those on any of these rip downs that I pointed out on um, NQ here. So I'll go back, so I'm gonna, without going into detail with them, right? I wanna go back and show you where I was highlighting. I was highlighting this day, this day, this day, this day, that was December 31st. Um, let's see if there's any other days I need to highlight in here. Ah. How about this day right here? Okay, what what's important about all those days? All of those days are days that could have added massive losses to your P&L, right? And I bet if you go look at the majority of these days, I haven't looked myself, but my guess is gonna be all the damage occurred within the first hour, 30 minutes to an hour, and the rest of the day, um, you should have been looking for ways to get back up. And also, what infuriates most traders is that, you know, you look at this chart and you go, how could have I possibly lost any money trading the long side on NQ on that chart, right? You look at a three month picture of that chart and you're like, that thing has moved a thousand points, right? That thing has moved a thousand points per contract. How could I lose any money? And the answer to that question is twofold. The first answer to that question is, you got clipped in one of these moves and you let it pitch you on tilt, right? The first stop is not the problem. It's the second, third, and fourth stop, right? And the next part, or you looked at it and you said, you got emotional. You looked at the bar right here and you said, ha, that is it. We are going to zero. The market is over. That is a change in character and I'm fully vested on the short side trade of that market, right? And you got into one of these. And what happened was because you got, so I want, I want you to think through this carefully. If you don't get emotional and you look for locations to short like 50, 60 retraces, points of control, yada, 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 so on and so forth, there was probably scalps to the short side. But as a coach, a one-on-one -on -one trading coach, what I notice is that people get locked into fighting the short side and they go, and what they say is, oh no, I'm not covering this for my one or two normal points because this is a change in character, right? So going back to Daniel in the room, Daniel, this is why I arm wrestle you so hard every time you call a change in character. One bar, one move, one day does not constitute a change in character. Maybe a potential change in character, but not a change in character, right? And so what that trader does is instead of going, oh, I shorted the 50-60 retrace and rolled it back to the downside, right? Right through here. Uh, instead, what they do is they go, well, there's no way in hell I'm covering this because this is going to zero. And they get stopped, right? And then they short here somehow and they're profitable and they get stopped. And the story goes on and on until they're over here. By the time they're over here, they are so far in tilt with the indignity that the market could have possibly continued to go up after we got that quote change in character, right? And they've lost so much money on the day, intraday, 
they simply refuse to cover. And I got to tell you, I fall into that category personally, not with the fighting it anymore. That's why you'll see me sometimes go, guys, I'm just not in a mentally good state to trade and I'm walking out, right? What that means is with all my heart and all my soul, I think the market should have changed the way it was behaving. I'm trying to exert my control over every other market participant, right? And how did I learn that? Well, I got the shit kicked out of me. That's how I learned that, right? I got... Someone said in a speech I heard really well that there's only one requirement. I'm going to tune it down just a bit. There's only one requirement for making a lot of money in the market. There's only one way where you get to a place where you make a lot of money in the market. There's a couple of naturals that walk in, but for most people, if you find most guys who've made a living grinding it out, and they have a very nice living, but they come in day in, day out, and they're grinders, right? And that is they have a well-tenderized backside, right? They have a well-tenderized backside from fighting the market. And it gets tenderized enough where they stop trying to be smarter than the market. And they just trade what's presented to them by the market. And then they recognize their own emotions really quickly, right? And that's happened. I, can, I, I don't have any shame in telling you. It took me going into 2002 the reason why I know all the things that I know and the reasons, the lessons that I've learned that I've learned is I had my butt so well tenderized that uh, it was pretty much could have been just thrown in a fryer and ready to be served. That's how bad it was that I was like, I will do anything not to continue drawing down 20 and 30 percent in my trading account on a regular basis. It was literally causing me enough stress to kill me uh, because my numbers. So here's the deal. When I had a small account. 20, 30% drawdowns didn't mean anything, right? I was like, yeah, that's normal, no big deal. But when you start talking about big numbers, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, getting pitched out the window, right? And for me, the realization was, wow, I lost, you know, I could have bought my neighbor's home for him, or I could have, you know, I could have done anything, or I could have sent 20 kids to college for four years with the money I pitched out the window today. Now, for me, that's my psychological barrier, right? But this is important, right? But what I learned is, I never had to pitch that money out the window to begin with, right? So, and let me go back to explaining why we didn't. Look at the two locations we had earmarked in a straight up market on NQ today. And again, this is, just so everyone knows, I'm not making this up. All the members that are in the room are still in the room. This wasn't, this isn't post, uh, post luck trading, right? This was our first short location, right? In, Guys, I want to say it was right here, right? Wasn't it uh, 77, I believe? It was right. I can't get that because it's covering it. Let's see if I can move it up. There we go. Right in here. Some of the members covered that. The, the target was five points down. I covered, and I ended up going, being uh, flat on this trade because I, I covered enough on this first five points down to pay for my stop, which was back over here. But this 77, 78 area, this was where we were um, targeting our first short. Some of the members got five points and closed the whole position. I only covered enough to pay for the, it, I was, again, hoping that we were going to get a rotation back down. And I used the cover to pay for my stop, which I did, right? Our next target for a short was right, uh, it was 87, if I recall correctly, guys. Uh, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. It was... 66 that's what it was it was right here okay with a stop right over here that was the entry exit stop and it took too long to get over there it took over an hour but because the the trade location was set up back over here so this was our target this was our target for short entry okay but i take a step back from that and i look okay so i didn't have a great day i'm, I'm flat right no one's nothing bad nothing good i didn't make any money long i didn't make any short money short I could have, I could have taken my five points here and gone home. I tried to push the trade, it didn't work. But my point behind that is I've gotten good enough now that when I'm when I'm pressing the when I'm pressing my entries or where I'm looking for entries, um, I'm just going off a of structure and following process. I still had an opportunity to make money today. And had I taken this short, it just took too long to get back over here. That actually would have ended up being a almost a ten point roll to the downside. It would have actually paid me quite nicely. Right. So long story short. Oh, and then one last piece. This was my last. This is my first best seller right here. And you'll see that that trade when we got back above them. So I, I cover this with the members in the room all the time. I pointed out that this was a valid long 
when we closed up on this bar, but that your stop was already back at the low. The stop was just too big. I wasn't willing to take the stop that early in the day. It actually wasn't that large a stop. It was 60, uh, 66.71 against 66. Um, let's see, it would have been 71. Actually, it was 71, 61. It was a 13 point stop, and I wasn't willing to take it in the morning, but that entry worked pretty nicely uh, from a, at least a structural point. So, a couple of things, and then I'll wrap it up. For tomorrow, we have to get underneath value area low and the point of control from today in order to make a punch lower, right? This acknowledge that this sucks as a day trader. This is not what you live for. For swing traders, this is what swing traders live for, right? They're not selling a single position and it keeps grinding and grinding and grinding. Those guys live for it. What we live for, if you're in my room, we live for the two-sided trade and we just didn't get it today, right? Last piece. The biggest danger right now is that we get caught in that funnel and they rip down to the downside hard. Two pieces that you need to keep in front of you to manage for yourself. Okay, number one, you see a large rotation in the first five or ten minutes of the day. Heads up, changing potential changing character intraday, right? Number two, the greatest risk of the rip to the downside, as in Russell today, is all in that first hour. And then don't get bearish on the rip down. We are most likely going to see a ton of V-shaped patterns this year, and we are praying and hoping for bad news. The best thing that can happen to us right now is that a company comes out and pre-announces missed earnings. We get some kind of news spike. Anything negative is a gift right now, and you've got to be prepared to take it. Anyways, that's my two cents. Anyone have any questions? Because I'm ready to blow out of here. I'm going to get the charts done, and I'm going to watch some national championship football tonight. And Dan, if you could throw that out onto Twitter or Stock Twits or send me an email where I can post it, I'd really, really appreciate it. That really helps me out. Hey, you're very welcome, James. James, you back in town, brother? Are you back up from Florida? Or did you stay a couple more days to avoid the deep frost? Back Tuesday. Okay, cool. JFK got flooded. Watch out for that. Anyways, guys, have a great night. Thank you all for joining. And everyone knows how to reach me, so if you have any questions, shoot them to me. Trade well, guys. See you all tomorrow morning.